insert the words to make after the lead member for planning. So it will read lead member for planning to make final editorial and formatting amendments within item uh, in bullet point two. That will be noted. Thank you. <coughs> Mr Mayor and fellow councillors, tonight we can make a real difference to the future needs of our residents in developing a borough for everyone. To provide housing, employment and leisure facilities for everyone to enjoy. This borough local plan started work following the rejection of the previous submission in 2007 on the grounds of not reviewing our Greenbelt boundaries and where sustainable growth could take place throughout the borough and in particular made ahead with the advent of the Crossrail project. Over the last 10 years, we have been preparing and providing the evidence to present our plan. Sorry. Um, uh, evidence to back up our plan moving forward to this Regulation 19 process that we are discussing tonight. This plan starts in 2013 and runs through to 2033 where we can take into account buildings that have already received planning consent but have yet to be built as our objectively assessed housing need is to provide 712 dwellings per annum equating to 14,240 dwellings over the planned period. In 2015 we carried out a call for sites to ask landowners, developers to come forward with sites that could meet that housing growth. Each site was assessed and those considered appropriate in planning terms were consulted upon during the Regulation 18 process. From the 2nd of December 2016 through to the 13th of January 2017. There is no minimum period of consultation, but it ran for six weeks as it was over the Christmas period. This council is able to meet that government target in full, 100%, with, within the boundaries of the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. We are using brownfield sites, previously developed sites within the Green Borough, which has led us to look at existing boundaries on the edge of settlements to provide this housing growth. Amending the boundaries in this manner will mean that only 1.5% is taken out of the green ground. Therefore, retain, therefore retaining and protecting 81.5% of our existing green belt until the end of the plan period of 2033. Currently, young adults cannot get onto the housing market as they would need 12 and a half times their annual salary to even afford a home of their own in this borough. This cannot be right, so we need to build houses, apartments, with a range of tenure schemes to allow this to change. I know that this may be unpopular with some of our residents, but this is happening in every borough up and down the country as the population increases. We must do something to address this lack of provision over many years previously. If we do nothing tonight, as some would suggest, the Department of Communities and Local Government and the Planning Inspectorate would step in to take over the planning service and will write their own plan without consultation. We cannot continue to discuss the plan as we have to move it forwards onto the next stage and cannot go backwards. This plan has been checked by Council to conclude that the plan can proceed to the next stage. This plan is robust to deliver the housing and employment growth for the borough, provide new schools for our young people, enable young adults to take that step of getting onto the housing ladder locally, facilitate the clinical commissioning groups to provide the necessary healthcare provision to meet that demand, regeneration proposals and ASCOT and Maidenhead to create vibrant communities and a new leisure facility at Braywood. Infrastructure will happen as new developments are proposed and receive planning consent. The infrastructure delivery plan is a constant evolving document 
As individual sites and master plan for development, they will provide the necessary infrastructure as part of their development proposal. The borough local plan is to provide that platform so the real time is up. Sorry, if I can just finish. I've oh, heard you got this borough local plan is to provide that platform for building a borough for everyone. And we'd ask councillors tonight to agree to that process to move forward to that consultation on the technical and legal soundness of this plan, which will, will run from the 30th of June through to the 25th of August 2017, with submission to the Secretary of State in October 2017. I would like to thank the members of Thin and poor. And to be honest, misleading to say 
let's uh, you're dealing with the transport <coughs> infrastructure issues. So, um, and then you get down to the consultation. Well, I mean, it was really quite shocking, wasn't it? Suddenly, at the last minute, you chuck in a whole load of green belt sites, some of which have been discussed before and rejected. Then you have a consultation for six weeks over Christmas. That's <laughs> 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 something better to do over Christmas, don't they? Um, and, and then I, I feel that you misled people about the number of responses. It was like 6,000 responses or something, wasn't it? And it turns out they weren't individual responses. They, there was only sort of a, a thousand or so of those. So again, misleading. So disappointing. And then I suppose at the end of it, you just ignored most of the responses anyway. Um, <laughs>
competence of others can also be wrong. Now, in the last 17 years, the number of homes in my ward has increased by 25%, and that is rough, roughly uh, the growth that is proposed up to 2033. Now, there is a difference in that instead of fragmented development that came forward in the past, there are a number of very significant sites. And in my view, we should be subject to considerable consultation and the community should be able to help shape these development policies. Now that process is in place for, for the rejuvenation of Ascot Centre, where the ambition is that whilst retaining a leading aspect, the form and character should better reflect the internationally renowned Ascot Red Schools. Now, to my mind, the Borough Local Plan brings with it incredible potential, particularly the golf course site which is in the council's control. As the development comes, uh, process comes forward, I'm sure that the leader will ensure full involvement with residents to create a look and feel and character that will be attractive to <laughs> Now in the south, the council has no land holdings, so I'm seeking a different and maybe unique way to create involvement. I'd like to form a small group who, along with a planner, engages with developers to listen and offer constructive input. Yeah. I have in principle agreement from the leader and now need to establish how to make this, this work in practice. In, uh, when I'm referring, generally anything that reduces planning risk is acceptable to developers. Now, the name of the planning group told me, told, to vote against Regulation 19 for the design. But they are not the only people I represent. In December 2016, more than 250 people who attended a consultation on the Ascot Rejuvenation Project completed the survey, and I was provided copies. All the surveys indicated that people wish homes to be built, that their children or their grandchildren can afford